the resistance continues with Insomniac's latest entry to their PlayStation exclusive franchise. With the entire world now occupied by Chimera, let's see where Resistance 3 takes the series. Nathan Hale is dead, the Chimera have won the war, and 90% of humanity has been either killed or converted. The remaining 10% of humanity exists as scattered groups of survivors, some of them still fighting, while others simply try to get by. You play as Joseph Capelli, the last remaining sentinel and Nathan Hale's killer. Even though Hale was undeniably consumed by the Chimera virus within him, Capelli was dishonorably discharged for his actions. In the four years following, Capelli started a family and began to focus on surviving rather than fighting. This choice proves to be short-lived, however, as the Chimera discover and uproot Capelli's group from the hiding place. As if by fate, he once again finds himself back in the fight, this time escorting Dr. Malikov to New York City in one final, desperate attempt to stop the Chimera in plague. It's an interesting and well-written story, accompanied by fairly good voice acting. Don't make me choose, Joe. Don't do that to me. The story also has a steady flow to it, with transitional cutscenes and gameplay between locations, rather than jumping the player from one place to another. Insomniac also did a good job with the game's atmosphere. The level design, details, and soundtrack merge in a way that creates a very authentic feeling post-war world, one in which the victor is very clear. Unfortunately, the game doesn't end so smoothly. Without mentioning any specifics, the game fails to answer some key questions, and without a cliffhanger ending, I was left unsatisfied. Who is them? Resistance 3 continues much of the classic Resistance gameplay, with a few elements both added and removed. In a somewhat old-school style that should please many players, Resistance 3 features health pickups rather than health regeneration. Though health packs are fairly abundant, it does add a challenge to certain areas of the game. There is also a nice variety of weapons to be found and carried throughout the game, with a weapon wheel providing easy access. All of these weapons acquire experiences are used and gain new features and attachments with each level. The overall gameplay feels very much like the previous titles, except for the fact that it takes place in a post-war setting rather than its predecessor's Warzone-dominated environments. The game also lacks any drivable vehicles, such as the Stalker section in Resistance Fall of Man, though you do get to ride along passenger on some. Some classic enemies such as the Titan are missing as well, though several new ones are introduced. While it lacks in some areas and gains in others, Resistance 3's gameplay isn't a great stride forward for the series, but it will keep you entertained for the duration of the game, especially if you enjoyed the previous two entries. Resistance 3 is powered by Insomniac's own game engine. While the game is definitely an upgrade to the series in the graphics department, it isn't exactly top of the line when compared to other modern releases. Nevertheless, it's still a decent looking game and the designers utilize the engine well. Though I've heard of freezing issues, my own playthrough was relatively bug free. The one issue I found worth mentioning was the occasional audio hiccup between dialogue and character animations. Dale said he's got your bullseye ready at the range. The multiplayer in Resistance 3 seems to be geared in a different direction than the previous two games. While I do think it's great that they finally added online co-op to the campaign, they have removed much from the competitive multiplayer. Gone are the days of 60 or more players in a competitive match, as Resistance 3 has a player limit of 16. The character and equipment customization has also been removed in favor of various unlockable player skins. The ability to browse player-hosted servers is a thing of the past as well. Though there is still a wide selection of editing options available for private matches, having to invite your friends and recent players to join those matches usually takes a lot longer and is much less successful than having your match in a searchable list. Players must also have an online pass in order to play Resistance 3 multiplayer. Even though a pass does come with new versions of the game, buying a used copy forces the player to purchase an online pass in addition to the cost of the game. I cannot express how much I dislike online passes, and it saddens me to see so many games adopting them lately. For all it's missing, the multiplayer does have its good points as well. Players can create a set of custom loadouts, consisting of a primary weapon, grenade type, two abilities, and two attributes. As players gain experience and level up, they acquire skill points that they can use to unlock and upgrade more weapons and abilities. There is also a set of killstreak rewards called Berserks that includes things such as cloaking, the auger rifle, and several others. As a whole, the multiplayer for Resistance 3 is a solid and enjoyable experience, but like the campaign, it left me wanting more. While it may not be the best in the series, Resistance 3 is still a good game. 
Its biggest flaw is that it leaves a player wanting to experience more of it. Let's hope Insomniac one day grants that wish.